Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel 3D Creation with Blender. The next video is the collected material I presented as part of a conference we had this year in Valencia, Spain, on October 2. So, what are you going to see in this video? Well, I will show you some of the process and logic behind the rigging and advanced techniques for facial animation using Blender, such as sculpting facial expressions without losing the original shape of your model, and creating animations mixing the original shape with your newly created expressions. This method is called shape keys. And I will show you how to make these deformations to behave in a semi-automatic way, by linking the shape keys to bones using drivers. We also are going to see the use of tension maps to create wrinkles or skin folds on different areas of our model depending on the facial expression. We can see in the left side of the screen that when our character opened his mouth, there's a deformation in the eye and cheek area as well, in order to make the animation look more real. So, when the mouth opens, it triggers a shape key making the face wider, and corrective shape keys at both sides of the mouth. And if the jawbone rotation angle is big enough, another set of shape keys pull up the sides of the mouth, cheeks and lower eyelids. On the other hand, if the mouth shoots and the jawbone rotates beyond its original angle, a shape key pushes the upper lip and nostrils. Without this corrective deformation, the lower lip will intersect through the mesh, like in the model at the right side of the screen. But before we dive into it, let's remember some basic animation concepts. To control the movements of our character, we use a skeletal rig. A character can be made up of several objects, a main body, separated eyeballs, teeth, clothes, and more. So it's easier to have an object to control the rest. There will be cases where we'll need some extra help doing some complex deformations, and that's when shape keys come in handy. But what is exactly a shape key? Let's start with a basic object. Cylindrical shape, for example. We have two shape keys that deform the object. One for the left side of the mesh and other for the right side. The shape keys have a slider that controls the mix between the original shape and the new one. And the value can be set in a keyframe. Therefore, the deformation can be animated on the timeline. Now, let's pretend our cylindrical model is an arm or a leg. We create an armature consisting of two bones that will function like a knee or an elbow. The bones bend the model, but it looks like a plastic bar, more than a human body joint. It just doesn't look natural. The easiest way to fix this is adding a shape key and sculpt the final shape in the bending movement for both left and right rotation. It looks better. But now, we need these corrective deformations to activate automatically when the bones move. This is when we need to use drivers. Drivers are a way of controlling an object's property using the value from another object's property. In this case, we are animating two shape keys using the X rotation of a bone. If the bone rotates to the left, the first shape key activates itself. If the bone rotates to the right, the other shape key does the same. In the left side of the screen, we can see a character animated with shape keys controlled by drivers, 
which activate different corrective deformations depending on the jaw bone position. This way, we can animate the bones and forget about the corrective shape keys because once properly linked, they will be working automatically. The corrective deformations are at this stage quite subtle. The first one makes the face a little wider as the jaw bone moves beneath the skin when the mouth opens. The second shape key pushes the lips and nostrils up if the mouth shuts beyond its original position, like when we put our chin and lips further forward than normal because we are angry or concentrating on something. So why we need to use shape keys to make facial expressions? Why not just keep using traditional bone deformation? Well, facial expressions are not the result of a single muscle. They are made up of several muscles pulling and pushing from all directions. So a better and faster approach to this is to sculpt the desired expressions in one shape key and assign its value to a specific bone or build it up on several shape keys and activate them when certain bones move or rotate, if it's the case of corrective shape keys. In the right side of the screen, we can see the original unsubdivided model, a highly subdivided copy in the middle, without the wrinkle displacement map, and in the left side, a model without the displacement modifiers enabled. The reason to use a displacement map instead of shape keys is because shape keys operate in the original mesh before the subdivision modifier makes the surface smoother. Such tiny details can only be obtained as real displacement after the mesh is subdivided several times, or by using simulated displacement with normal maps. In this case, we are going to use real displacement. Displacement maps are grayscale images, where color black displaces the geometry inside the mesh, creating creases. White displaces the mesh to the outside, creating bulges. And the medium gray tone means no change. To apply these maps to our model, we need to unfold the surface into a UV layer. I'm using two UV layers, one that focus in the facial area and the rest of the head is minimized, and another layer to map the rest of the textures. Well, I'm using the Danny Trejo head that I sculpted for another conference. You can watch that uh, time-lapse in this channel. So our character is ready for some rigging and skinning work. I started by making a simple armature and parenting the head, eyes and teeth to it. When you parent an object to a rig using the automatic weights option, vertex groups for each bone are created, but it always needs some manual tinkering. Just like the vertex group for the jaw bone, it moves almost the entire face instead of just the lower half of the mouth. To correct all this, we need to enter weight paint mode and fix the influence groups for each bone.
you just uh, have to paint the skin and move the bone, paint the skin and move the bone, and keep doing this until you get satisfied with the result. Let's talk about the facial expression shape keys workflow. I created the shape keys in two groups, corrective shape keys and expression shape keys. In the expression group I had angry eyes, surprise eyes, sniffing nose, smile and duck face. The initial shape already had an angry mouth expression, and a neutral one that we obtained with the smile after 50% of its value. For every type of expression shape key, I first do one side and then mirror it to the opposite side. You can mirror any shape key if your model is symmetric. By hiding the rest of the shape keys and selecting from the shape key menu the new shape from mix option and then the mirror shape option. The eyes were parented to the armature as an object, not using weights, and that's because I wanted to control their rotation with a constraint, making them follow another bone I added later. I started building the rig with just 10 bones, to cover the simplest actions, like opening the mouth or closing the eyes, moving the neck or the shoulders. To control the eye rotation, what I did was to add a new bone in front of the face and two empties, one for each eyeball, and parent these empties to the bone. As each eye has a constraint that makes them to always point their y-axis to the corresponding empty, I can control not only the direction the eyes are looking to, using the bone position, but its rotation also alters the horizontal distance between the empties and the bone, making the character look cross-eyed. I added three more bones to control shape keys, one in the middle to shrink the upper lip and one at each side of the face, to control both the smile and the tightening of the lips. As these two facial expressions seem to be antagonistic, I have used the same bone to control both of them, so they won't mix. If the bone moves up, it triggers the smile shape key. But if it moves lower than its original position, the duck face shape key starts to blend in. Then I use the, the same workflow on the eyebrow shape keys. If a bone moves up, it triggers the surprise shape key. If it uh, moves down, it triggers the angry shape key. One of the problems I came across when rigging the jaw movement was some mesh intersection when the mouth rotated too much past uh, its original position like when we tighten our lips because we are angry. Constraints and shape keys corrected the formation, but the teeth and gums mesh was still intersecting in itself. The solution to this problem was to add a second jawbone, which copied the rotation of the original bone, but it had a constraint that did not allow it to rotate past a certain point. This way, when the mouth is closed, the teeth stop rotating before it goes through itself, but the lips can go a little further. As I started to add more bones, it seemed necessary to make use of the custom bone feature. This feature lets you use any object to replace the conventional bone shape and have a very organized layout 
in your armature. For some bones like the jaw bone, a circular shape is more appropriate. Well, maybe arrows are better for bones controlling shape keys. Almost every bone has constraints to limit their position or to stop them from moving or rotating in more than one axis. Another way to keep your rig well organized is to make bone groups and assign a color to each group, so you can easily see what, uh, which bones are shape key bones or normal bones, or left side, right side bones for that matter. Now, let's see how the wrinkle map is implemented. We will have to change the shader options to better see the surface displacement. As we have previously seen, we are only using a single displacement map for the wrinkles. The trick is to set up multiple displacement modifiers using this same texture. but limiting its influence to small areas using vertex groups. This way, we can trigger the displacement for left, right, upper and lower areas in the character face separately. Well, that's it. Uh, I hope uh, you have found this video useful, uh, don't forget to subscribe, and uh, until next time, see ya!